Hamilton's News 3 Now This Morning. Good morning, everyone. It's 6.30 on September 20th. I'm Christina Laurie. And I'm Aaron White. And yeah, we're talking about uh, summer-like temperatures going into the work week. Finally. But yeah, finally. We after got flighted we had that cool one weather. week about two weeks back yeah. when it was super cold. Way too early. I know. So. I mean, talking about highs in the 50s, we <laughs> barely made it into the 50s a couple of those days, which was just kind of crazy to think about. But we got 70s in the forecast. Things are this finally week. changing for the better. Yeah. And the other thing to note about today is we have that haze building back in. You can already see it here on the sky cam. Uh, that haze uh, building in from the west. We saw that on satellite yesterday across Iowa and Minnesota. Now here in Wisconsin for today, all of this again because of the fires out along the west coast in California and parts of Oregon. Here's a live look over Madison. We have uh, temperatures uh, on the cool side though, 42 degrees, your current temperature. Across the area, we have temperatures generally into the 40s, 43 in Janesville, uh, 46 in the Dells, 47 in Platteville and Lancaster, and about 42 degrees in Boscobel. But a look ahead to today, it's going to be a rather nice day. Sunny, but again, hazy uh, for much of the day. High of around 68, and we're going to be turning even warmer going into the work week. So uh, look ahead. It's going to be actually a pretty nice work week. It's also that time of year when the temperatures really swing between when you walk out oh, the door 100%. in the morning to when you leave work. So yeah. your forecast is even more important. Yeah, I was going to say even yesterday, like coming in, it was like kind of chilly, like upper 30s. And then by the afternoon, walking around outside is actually, this is really nice. Yeah, so... so. Thank you for your nice forecast, yeah. Aaron. The push to fill Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg's seat on the Supreme Court is expected to start tomorrow, less than 72 hours after her death. Ginsburg, only the second woman ever selected for the country's highest court, passed away Friday after complications with metastatic pancreatic cancer. She was known as one of the court's more liberal voices and a fierce supporter of civil and women's rights. Less than one hour after her death, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell released this statement. Quote, the president's nominee will receive a vote on the floor of the U.S. Senate. And that process will begin tomorrow. President Trump has been adding names to his running list of potential nominees throughout his presidency. In recent weeks, he added 20 more names, including Republican Senators Tom Cotton of Arkansas and Ted Cruz of Texas. Two women, including former Wisconsin Supreme Court Justice Diane Sykes, are also on that list. Any move by Republicans would be unprecedented this close to an election and a reversal of what happened four years years ago. Back in 2016, then President Barack Obama nominated Merrick Garland to the high court 11 months before election day. The Republican controlled Senate never voted on his nomination, saying it was too close to the election. This time around, a UW expert on American politics says Trump could potentially use the appointment of a justice as a political tool, selecting one from Wisconsin in hopes of winning over voters here. Diane Sykes from Wisconsin. Uh, she was on the president's first short list. Uh, I think a lot of people wondered whether she was truly on that list. She's eminently qualified to be sure, slightly older than the usual nominee that people go for, uh, that presidents go for. Um, but, uh, but the president needs to win Wisconsin. And if he could pick somebody from Wisconsin, uh, this could help it. You might remember in 2016 when Barack Obama was president, Wisconsin Senator Ron Johnson said, quote, let's let voters have a voice when it came to filling the court's vacancy. Now Johnson says President Trump should be able to appoint a justice and has have it go to the Senate floor for a vote. According to the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, Johnson says the Senate should move forward with installing a justice since we don't have a divided government. Democrat Senator Tammy Baldwin disagrees, saying the Senate should wait until after the election. Election. In a statement, Baldwin said, after the voters have spoken in the election, we can then move forward on a Supreme Court nomination. When then President Obama nominated Merrick Garland 11 months before the election, Baldwin was in support of voting on his nomination. As new developments come in this week, be sure to stick with News 3 now on air and online at channel3000.com. Keep an eye on your mail this week. Ballots for 80,000 Madison voters are on their way. After you get yours and fill it out, you can drop it off at dozens of locations across the city. You can also drop off your ballot at the city clerk's office on weekdays starting Tuesday or at your polling location on Election Day. If drop-off doesn't work for you, the Madison clerk's office is partnering with the city parks division for a pair of absentee voting events. The first is next Saturday, September 26. Poll workers will be at more than 200 city parks registering voters and collecting absentee ballots. 
The U.S. reached a grim milestone overnight. More than 200,000 Americans have now died of the coronavirus. A University of Washington model used by the White House predicts the U.S. will most likely double that number by January 1st. Around the world, more than 950,000 people have now died. These numbers come as Wisconsin is expected to hit 100,000 all-time cases of the virus later today. According to combined data from state and county dashboards, the state has added Added more than 2,000 new cases over the past 24 hours. The state is now just 350 shy of 100,000. The state set a record for the most cases in a single day this weekend with more than 2,600. Meanwhile, the UW-Madison is reporting its fewest new case numbers in three days. 91 more students tested positive between on and off campus testing locations. The campus is continuing virtual learning through at least this Friday. Heading into a new week, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is out with new guidelines on who should be tested for the virus. This guidance mainly impacts asymptomatic people who have come in contact with an infected person. The center suggests those people should now get tested and quarantined for 14 days, which is a change from guidance released last month saying testing might not be necessary for people without symptoms. A reminder that people living here in Dane County can get tested Monday through Saturday at the Alliant Energy Center and soon they might have more options when it comes to the kind of tests they are receiving. UW Health will continue testing its new pilot program this week, a COVID saliva test. Dr. Jeff Pothoff says the results are proving to be effective so far, but still believes the nose swab test is most accurate. It's back online for another school in our area after spikes in COVID cases. Monroe High School is going virtual for the next couple of weeks at least. The district says it's due to an increase in COVID cases at the high school among both students and staff. This will start tomorrow and go through October 1st. Students at the middle and elementary schools will continue to attend as previously scheduled. And the Marcuson School District is also taking a week-long break from classes following what what school officials there are calling a dramatic rise in cases. The break will last through next Sunday, September 27th. The district says it will be addressing cleaning, mitigation, and virtual options for quarantine students in their return to school plans and says the large uptick in cases has stressed their system for staffing. Administrators say this will be a complete week off and will not be a week of virtual learning. They plan to adjust their school calendar if necessary to make up for these lost days. Back in Madison, virtual learning continues and district leaders are trying to get the word out that even though they're not meeting in person, they still have food available for students. During the first week of their new meal program, administrators say one in eight students picked up meals. The district also served more than 5,000 breakfasts and lunches to students in its daycare facilities. Here's a picture of what families are receiving. Once a week, every student can get enough food for five breakfasts and five lunches. District leaders say they're following national nutrition guidelines and trying to avoid waste. We asked them if participation in this pickup program will impact future funding for schools. We don't see it having a, a negative impact on the on the budget uh, at, at this point. Uh, we, we do obviously we're fiscally responsible and we want to make sure that we are accounting for each of the meals that we are distrib distributing and accurately reporting those so we there is a mechanism for uh, ta tabulating the number of meals that we that we distribute. Parents are encouraged to sign up for meals ahead of time. That helps the district prepare. You can find out when and where to pick up meals on our website, channel3000.com. Time now for one of our favorite stories of the week. Members of a local church are honoring the more than 1,200 people here in Wisconsin who've died of the virus. Members of Trinity Unity Methodist Church downtown have created this ribbon tribute. They say they wanted to both demonstrate the tragic impact the pandemic has had in our communities and to give people who are mourning a place to pray, meditate, and honor the lives of people who've passed away. We forget that each number of each death that you hear about, each of those numbers was an actual person. And so for us, being able to represent that with a ribbon in kind of this very visual way, I think helps bring this pandemic to life. You can visit the memorial tribute outside of the church located downtown on Vilas Avenue. It's 639 this morning. We're going to take a live look over the Capitol on this. The sun's coming up just about now. When I drove in, it was pitch dark. Aaron is tracking our Sunday forecast right after this.
Download the Channel 3000 First Warm Weather app today. Our retirement plan with Voya gives us confidence. We can spend a bit now knowing we're prepared for the future. Surprise! Surprise! We renovated the guest room so you can live with us. I'm good at my condo. Well planned, well invested, well protected. Voya, be confident to and through retirement. Thinking about your financial plan? So are we. Prudential helps 25 million people with their financial needs. With over 90 years of investment experience, our thousands of financial professionals can help. Go to Prudential.com or talk to an advisor. Hi, I'm Jonathan Greenhut, the CEO of Plexiderm. We've created the best offer yet with our Plexiderm 10-Minute Challenge. All it takes is 10 minutes to reduce the appearance of under-eye bags, wrinkles, and crow's feet. Celebrities and even people across the country just like you look and feel years younger in minutes. So I've had under-eye bags for a very long time, and it sucks. And I took the Plexiderm 10-Minute Challenge, and I'm not joking, it works. I'm Neela. I'm a professional personal trainer. It's so important to take care of yourself. Plexiderm, seriously, it's amazing. There's nothing there. Like, the bags are gone. The instant results are from naturally based silicates found in shell rock. Once applied, your skin tightens and firms, rapidly reducing the appearance of under eye bags and wrinkles in minutes. So if under eye bags and wrinkles make you look tired and older, try it today for only $14.95 plus get free shipping. Visit PlexidermTrial.com or call the number on your screen. At Mounds Pet Food Warehouse, we know that no two pets are the same. That's why each of our five southern Wisconsin locations is wall-to-wall -wall with everything you and your pet need, including dog food, cat food, pet beds, thousands of toys, treats, and shoes, and supplies for your small animals, birds, and reptiles, too. With so many options, finding what you need is easy. you got to get down to Mounds and see for yourself. Mounds Pet Food Warehouse powers them all. And don't forget your free Mounds candy bar. During Joe Biden's 47 years in Washington, Made in America was replaced with Made in China. Biden's bad trade deals put China first, and American workers paid the price. Millions of jobs lost to Mexico and China. Donald Trump is the jobs president. He helped create millions of jobs. Factories returned. African Americans, Hispanic Americans, and women saw record gains. President Trump will always put America first. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. News 3 Now First Warn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Halloween is a little more than a month away, and here's one dad's creative solution to a safe and socially distanced celebration. He calls it the candy shoot, and the contraption's gone viral. It allows him to give candy to trick-or-treaters from six feet away. To help trick-or-treaters who might be confused by the concept, a helpful ghost is taped to the bottom of the tube, and it says place buckets here. And from one holiday to another, the Salvation Army is getting a jump start on its annual Red Kettle campaign. Starting this week, this, the Army will be taking donations online. You can donate by visiting SalvationArmyDaneCounty.org. Last year's campaign raised more than $550,000 locally. Don't expect the bell ringers to be out just yet, though. We're told they won't start until November. I'm a big fan of Christmas myself, but I'm not ready to hear those bells just quite yet. Yeah, I feel like it's a little too soon. I mean, <laughs> we haven't even made it to the first day of fall. That's coming up this week, though, and it's going to be feeling a little kind of like fall, at least today, but uh, we're going to see warmer temperatures in the forecast going through the upcoming work week. The other thing in play for today is the return of the haze. This is a look at the satellite yesterday afternoon. You can see across Iowa, this patch of white, that's cloud cover, but across Iowa, there's some of that haze that's building in up to this white line that I drew here. So it didn't quite make it to Wisconsin yesterday, but it is in play for uh, this after today and uh, possibly into tomorrow as well. All those fires still burning across uh, much of the West, especially in California and Oregon, uh, starting to see a little bit better control. Uh, the firefighters are really uh, working hard to uh, put out some of those uh, larger fires burning in uh, Northern California and uh, parts of Oregon. But that haze is going to be building back in across the Midwest uh, through today. 
starting to disperse a little bit by tomorrow afternoon, but we could still see some off and on haze, uh, not as thick as we go throughout the work week. But here's a look over Madison. You can see uh, the just the orange and red color. That's because of the haze as the sun is coming up this morning and over uh, downtown Madison right now we have temperatures into the uh, lower 40s. Uh, so it's a cooler start to the day. 42 degrees. The sun is coming up, but we're going to deal with that haze for much of today and also some lighter winds this morning, but the wind will start to pick up a little bit for later today into tomorrow. That's going to bring that warmer air back into southern Wisconsin for the upcoming work week. So as we look across southern Wisconsin, though, temperatures are into the 40s for much of the area. 43 in Janesville, 46 in Mineral Point, 42 in Boscobel, and 47 in the Dells. And a look at our forecast for today. High around 68 as we go into the afternoon. Again, just have to deal with that haze uh, throughout much of the day. So here's a look at future track. We will see those temperatures warming up across southern Wisconsin into the middle 60s as we go towards the uh, lunchtime hour, 64 in Monroe and Mineral Point. And then by the afternoon, most of us into the upper 60s. Maybe flirting with the uh, lower 70s over towards uh, Boscobel and Prairie du Chien. So here's our forecast calling for a high of 60 degrees. I think the haze may try to limit us into the upper 60s for today. But by tomorrow, we are going to warm up quite a bit. Tonight, though, 48 degrees will be your low. And then a look at our forecast for tomorrow, 73. And then upper 70s on Tuesday and Wednesday. And basically in the 70s for much of the week. I wouldn't be surprised, though, on Saturday if we are closer to 80. So it's great. a little we're, more like summertime. It's nice we're having all this nice weather too for the week of restaurant week because I know yeah, a lot of sure. businesses would love to have folks come, but with the capacity limits. Yeah, I mean, people have to sit, out, to, yeah, yeah, sit outside and outside. with the sunshine and the warm temperatures, it's gonna be actually feel pretty nice. Yeah, so thanks might as well do that. Little gift from yeah. you to them. <laughs> Thank you, Aaron. The Packers home opener is tonight against the Lions. There won't be anyone in the stands for at least the first two home games this season, but there is still hope fans will return to Lambeau this year. Kia Murray reports. It was bizarre. It was almost eerie to be in the probably one of the loudest stadiums in the NFL. And uh, I mean, you could hear crickets. That was the feel last week as the Packers took on the Vikings in Minnesota. The first home game at Lambeau Field won't be any different, and the stadium will be just as empty as the parking lot. But that could be changing. We're, we're working with local health officials uh, and really going to rely on them. But, you know, for instance, the positivity rate in terms of testing, we want to see that below uh, 5%. Once Wisconsin sees those numbers, the Packers say fans could come back as early as November. And in the meantime, the team is watching others as it considers when to start allowing tailgating and fan attendance. What we're looking at now is uh, for the November 1st game against the Vikings, we, we'd like to make a decision that first week in October. Plus, some harder numbers on the financial impact. It's a big hit financially. Roughly a third of our revenue is local revenue. And the big chunk of that is ticket revenue. And as for Murphy's message to Packers fans. If you're in Green Bay, you know, do everything you can to make sure that our uh, virus numbers, the infection rates go down, because that's, that's going to be the key. And the decision's really going to be made, made based on science. Um, you know, we'd love to have fans. It would be great, but we're not going to put the community at risk. Murphy says the final decision should come by the first week of October. It's 6.48 this morning, Minnesota to Mississippi. We'll hear from a man making his way hundreds of miles downriver this weekend. How you can help him in his quest to raise money for families dealing with mounting medical bills. Several stories to make you smile are coming up. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, inventor of my pillow. Just like you, I had problems sleeping. I tried every pillow out there and nothing worked. 15 years ago, I invented my pillow. It took me two years to develop because I wanted to have everything you would ever want in a pillow. I made sure that you could adjust my patented fill so you could have the exact support you need as an individual, regardless of your sleep position. I also wanted a pillow that would last, so I made my pillow machine washable and dryable. I backed my pillow with a 10-year warranty and a 60 day money back guarantee. Not only that, I do all my own manufacturing in my home state of Minnesota. I really like the fact that it was made in the USA. I think that USA products are a better quality product. I've tried a lot of other pillows and nothing's worked like my pillow. I'm interrupting this commercial right now to give you deep discounts, not just on my pillows, but also my mattress, topper, sheets, and so much more. 
For example, you can get body pillows, regular $89.99, now only $29.99. Or my pillow dog beds for as low as $19.99 with your promo code. I used to think that sheets were just sheets. I got the Giza Dream sheets. They are the most comfortable sheets I've ever had. The Go Anywhere pillow is so easy to just roll up and take anywhere I want to go. Go Anywhere pillow is really comfortable, so that's what I really like. It's nice and supportive, and it's nice and small. The My Pillow Topper, for the first time, has enabled me to have a cool night's sleep. I'm able to go to bed and just get rest. That's three inches of wonderful that's in the My Pillow mattress topper. It's just like a firm cloud. My pillow helps me get a good night's sleep so I can do my job in the morning. Go to MyPillow.com to get deep discounts, not just on my pillows, but so much more. For example, you get body pillows, regular $89.99, now only $29.99, or my pillow dog beds for as low as $19.99 with your promo code. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. It's the mattress sale you don't want to miss. The A1 Back and Better Than Ever sale on now. With savings of up to 40% on top brand mattresses. Get a Nectar or Dream Cloud. The only mattresses with a 365-night guarantee and a lifetime warranty. Plus tax included on every purchase over $4.99. And for qualified customers, 48 months free financing. Most in-store items available for immediate pickup or delivery. One location only. Stoughton Road, Madison. Don't miss the A1 Back and Better Than Ever sale on now. On the next live before, we'll tell you about a fundraiser for Zars Promise, which helps out canine cancer patients. And our Will Loper will have a recap and reaction to the Emmy Awards. Away from your TV? Not a problem. Get breaking news, weather alerts, and political coverage from the award-winning News 3 Now team. Plus, all things Madison. Stay connected anywhere with Channel 3000, Madison's number one digital news source. Well, welcome back. The time is now 6.51 on the Sunday morning, and we have a beautiful sunrise over Madison right now, but it is also rather hazy, and that's going to be the trend as we go throughout the day. The haze uh, from those, uh, the smoke from the wildfires burning out along the West Coast, that's building back into the area, and that's going to continue for uh, today and possibly into tomorrow as well. We saw that yesterday across Iowa and Minnesota. Now over spreading Wisconsin for today into the early part of tomorrow, but I think it will start to disperse as we go throughout the work week. But otherwise for today, aside from the haze, we will have uh, kind of a hazy sunshine, but a high of around 68 degrees. So it actually will feel uh, pretty nice and looking even warmer as we go into the upcoming work week. Great news. Thank you so much, Aaron. Time for a look at what's trending. Time for a few of our favorite stories of the week as well. Right now, one man is floating down the mighty Mississippi on a pontoon boat, hoping to raise money and lift people's spirits. Eric Meesh is using an old Home Depot garden shed on top of what he calls an old rotting pontoon deck to make his way from St. Paul to Baton Rouge. He hopes his journey inspires people to give to a nonprofit called Spare Key, which helps families dealing with significant medical crises and hospital bills. Aside from that, he's hoping to give people something else they need right now. I'm a big believer in hope, and I think that's what this country needs more than anything else right now. And if they can find it in a garden shed on a pontoon traveling down the river, then I think we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. It's the little things, right? Eric started his journey in August and just passed through Davenport, Iowa this week. He plans to finish by mid-October. Between the pandemic, a struggling economy, protests, and an upcoming election, there's a lot weighing on people's minds right now. One therapist has come up with a unique way to help people manage their anxiety using a popular app. Shanti Tran knows firsthand how difficult things have been this year. The Kenosha native, now based in the Twin Cities, saw her schedule and waiting lists fill up with more people needing help. So she turned to TikTok to talk about recognizing the signs of trauma and anxiety. Trauma has to be rethought because it's happening and people don't even know that it's happening to them, especially black people. We should mention that TikTok is not a replacement for true therapy, but Tran says she helps her videos start a conversation. From mental to physical health, for decades, researchers have studied which diet is best. Now new findings show a twist on the traditional Mediterranean diet is ideal. 
31-year-old Darren Thomason tries to eat a healthy Mediterranean-style wow. diet with fruits and vegetables and lean protein. Perfect fish and some chicken, and I try not to eat too much red meat. Eating a good diet sort of makes me feel like I'm doing the right thing for my body. Now a review of research in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology shows a pesco Mediterranean diet which is rich in plants, nuts, whole grains, extra virgin olive oil and emphasizes seafood as the main protein may be the way to go. We have a lot of first level scientific evidence showing that this really makes a difference in your cardiovascular health, in all cause mortality, in preventing dementia, preventing diabetes and maintaining a healthy weight. Preventive cardiologist Dr. James O'Keefe authored the research. Intermittent fasting is recommended as part of this diet. When you don't consume calories for at least 12 hours, you, the inflammation starts going down. It's not as hard as it sounds because when you follow this kind of diet, the low sugar, low refined carbohydrates, high vegetable, high fat, it changes your hormones around so you're less hungry, um, and you sleep better. Dr. O'Keefe says red wine should be limited to one glass a day for women and up to two for men. And be sure to drink lots of water. Darren's first meal of the day is usually lunch. That equates to not eating for about a 15 hour period of time during the day, but that's not necessarily something I'm deliberately trying to do. I tend to have snacks during the day, like vegetables or nuts. And he knows exercise is also important. He even ran a marathon last year. Naomi Ruckham, CBS News, New York. Doctors say it's also best to avoid artificial sweeteners and added sugars because they can raise insulin levels. But that's, of course, easier said than done. A full hour of news, including a preview of Restaurant Week, is coming up right after this.